Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. How are you feeling this morning? It's Monday, so obviously you feel bad, but also a little bit depressed after what could have been the best day ever on Saturday. When that Harry Kane goal went in, the high was just so high that I think the fact that they got the equaliser was just made to feel even worse than potentially it should have done. Because let's not forget, 1-0 down at half-time, it wasn't looking good at that point. Anyway, this is your regular Monday edition of the five things we learned. And this week, it's the five things I feel we've learned from not just the Arsenal game on Saturday, but also the West Ham game last week. So my first point is this. I think teams are starting to out-Pochettino us. West Ham, especially away, the Berlin ground, their last game, uh, at the Berlin ground against us last week, just pressed us so high. And really, their energy was unbelievable, and we found it very difficult to take. Now, obviously, that game was played under pretty horrible conditions, and also their fans just wanted it, the desire was there. It just felt like everything was in West Ham's favour. But also, I noticed on Saturday against Arsenal that they were pressing us incredibly high as well, and that is not something that I think Arsenal are renowned for. I was very surprised how high their front three were up against us when Hugo Lloris was, uh, was on the ball. In fact, should mention, both against West Ham and against Arsenal, Hugo really nearly got himself in a lot of trouble with the ball at his feet. Uh, he likes to take that kind of one left-footed touch out of his feet before kicking it long. Sometimes that touch can just be a bit heavy. Now look, I'm not going to start slagging off Hugo Lloris. He has saved us so many points this season and before that. But I think he just has to be a bit careful with that first little touch out of his feet because sometimes it goes further away from his feet than he thinks, uh, thinks it does. Anyway, so in terms of being out Pochettino, I just mean teams are probably now being told that yes, we're going to press them really high. We're going to get three or four men around the ball at all times to try and win it back as quickly as we can in the transition. But maybe we're not so comfortable when teams are doing it to us. And I think maybe that's something we have to think about sometimes. I did notice away at Man City when we'd scored the, uh, the first goal and City started pressing us high, we just immediately started playing it long. So it's a difficult middle ground that I think we've got to start finding between obviously not getting ourselves into too much danger when the high press is on us, but also not immediately going long ball because then I feel like we, we lose out on a lot of the talent that we have and a lot of the, the kind of good football that we've been playing to score our goals this season. Anyway, so that was my first point in the five things I felt we learned. Our team starting to out, try and out Pochettino us with that high press. Let me know what you think. My second point is this, Moussa Dembele. Now, obviously, we all know what an incredible player he's always had the potential to be, what talent he has. Uh, Deli Ali said in an interview with 442 last week that the, t the player he wants on his five-a-side team every single day in training is Moussa Dembele because you can't get the ball off us. My point is this, I think Saturday's game against Arsenal and the difference in how we played between that and West Ham away three days prior was all about, not all about, but a lot about Moussa Dembele's return to the side. I thought he was colossal on Saturday. You couldn't get him off the ball. He was pretty direct when he got the ball, like running at the players, trying to make things happen. And the, uh, in the West Ham game a few days before, I think we really missed out on his presence. And obviously he'd, he'd missed two games before that as well. I don't think it's as simple as it just being his talent and what he brings on the pitch. I think opposition teams just don't like it as much when they're playing against him either. There's, got a, there's a bit of an aura around him now. I think people know that he's one of the best, teams, uh, best, best players in the league. There's talk uh, of him getting in the Premier League team of the year. And things like that really do affect opposition. So what my point is, is I think it's absolutely vital that if we're going to keep up some kind of challenge for the top three this season, Moussa Dembele needs to play the nine games. Uh, that we're playing now. We've got Dortmund away on Thursday night and then Villa away on Sunday. For me, and this is a bit controversial, I would at least say that it should be in Poch's mind to rest Musa on Thursday night. I know we, it's a huge game in Dortmund and we really want to win that game and get as far as we can in the Europa League, but Villa away, and it, it, people are saying it's easy, it won't be easy, because they, you know, they're a wounded animal. They lost 4-0 at the weekend to Man City. Moussa Dembele is the kind of player that could really rip that game open and I desperately want him to be at his best. Look, I won't, I'm not saying I would mind if Moussa starts against Borussia, Borussia Dortmund, but I'm just saying the league should be priority at this moment. So I wouldn't mind if Ryan Mason plays Thursday night. Anyway, I know a lot of you might disagree with me, but I just think getting six points out of the Villa and Bournemouth game, the next two games, is absolutely vital for our season. My third point today in the five things that I felt we've learned from the Arsenal game and the West Ham game is just... How big game a player Harry Kane is. Unbelievable. That moment he scored that goal was such a moment in time for me. Kyle Walker was way in a way better position, but Harry Kane didn't care. He's a striker and he's got 
just gold in his boots. You see it from Alan Shearer and Gary Lineker when they tweet about him. They're just like, he has got it. And it was an unbelievable finish. Not just the fact that it was such a brilliant finish from such a wide angle that's so difficult to do, an incredibly difficult skill. The moment it came at as well, exactly when Spurs needed it, exactly when the pressure was on in the biggest game of the season, and he put it in the top corner. Absolutely unbelievable. I've got some stats to back up what a great big game player Harry Kane, uh, Harry Kane is. He scored four times in three Premier League appearances against Arsenal in the North London derby. He scored 14 goals in 18 Premier League London derbies overall. Those games are notoriously difficult to, to score and play well in. He scored in three successive London derbies against Arsenal. It just goes to show when the, when the pressure comes on and the big games come round, Harry Kane has got it. And I'm fed up with hearing all those people saying, oh, he hasn't scored from open play in a few games, or he's a one-season wonder, or he's not quick enough, or he hasn't got it. This player should be playing for England. He should be leading the line for England. And if that means Wayne, Captain Wayne Rooney has to play around him, fine. But he has got it and he will cause all sorts of trouble to defenders in the Euros, as he will for Borussia Dortmund on Thursday, as hopefully he will in the last nine games. If he has a good finish to this season, he could score 30 goals again for Spurs, second season in a row. You know, that probably hasn't happened since Jimmy Greaves. I don't have that stat, but I'd be surprised if it has. Okay, the fourth thing, uh, the fourth, fourth point I want to make in the, things that, the five things that I think we've learned from these last two games is about Eric Lamella, and specifically Lamella's performance against Arsenal on Saturday. A few people have been saying different things, but I thought he was absolutely fantastic. And we all know I haven't always given a, a lot of praise to Eric Lamella. I do think sometimes his decision making leaves a little bit to be desired. But his desire, just to say desire again there, his desire was absolutely unbelievable on Saturday. He worked so hard. There's a little video going around on Twitter, check it out of him, and he's pressing on the uh, left-hand side of our defence. He won the ball back, just chasing three or four players around. Yes, he got booked early doors on Saturday, and he was flying in a bit, and it was a bit dangerous. And once their player, Coquelin, had been sent off, I know in the crowd we were all feeling like, oh, Eric, stop diving in, because he'll send you off as well. And that's why Pochettino took him off. But I have to say, as well as that, I felt we lost a certain something when he'd gone off. We'd lost a bit of the press, we lost a bit of ability on the ball, and maybe if we'd been a bit braver to keep him on five or ten more minutes, we might have seen out that game. I don't know. It's not as easy to say as that. Uh, obviously, two all is what happened in the end. It was probably a fair result. We dominated the first half. They looked good at the end of the first half, like they could have nicked a second goal. Uh, and then that ten-minute spell was great for us. But when they went to ten men, they did look good on the ball. Anyway, all I'm saying is Eric Lamella growing in stature all the time. He's become a fan's favourite, I think, a bit of a cult hero. Obviously, he loves a haircut, but most important, he's got that passion and desire for the big games, and that's why in any big game we play, including Dortmund on Thursday night, I'd have Lamella in my side. I think he's perfect for games like that. My final point and the five things that I felt we learned from the last couple of games, I just want to talk once again about Kevin Wimmer. The Austrian centre-back has really, really impressed me. Not just because of that last ditch, last second tackle against Aaron Ramsey, which was an unbelievable tackle, but his composure on and off the ball is excellent. He seems to like to be organised. Toby Alderweireld is a natural organiser. Hugo knows how to do that as well. But for a player who we got in just for a few million quid, five, six million quid, something like that in the summer, Kevin Wimmer has been a perfect third choice centre back. And since he's come in for Jan Vertonghen, he's done nothing but impress me. Uh, he seems to have a fantastic attitude as well. When he was asked about that last ditch tackle, he said, yeah, you know, I got there, but Hugo was behind me. So if I hadn't been there, he would have probably saved it anyway. And that shows he's a team player as well. He says the right things. Uh, just seems to be a great guy, and I think he could be the future of our uh, defence, Kevin Vimmer. Obviously, Jan and Toby won't go on forever, but they're still in their prime, so we don't have to worry about it. People get injured, uh, selections have to change. Kevin Vimmer will be a great squad player and first-team player for Spurs for many years to come, I think. So I just wanted to give him the props for that. Anyway, that's been my five things that I felt we learned from the West Ham and uh, Arsenal games. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Did I get them right? Are there other things that you felt we learned? Let us know, start the conversation, keep up the engagement. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, at Spurred On TV, and come on you Spurs. Hi guys, Bumby for Spurred On. Outside the lane, it finished Tottenham 2, Woolwich 2. I don't know if my heart can take much more of that. 